Do you have any opinions or preferences that aren't popular in the fountain pen community? I myself love hearing some feedback while I write and I find something oddly satisfying about a little bit of echo on the page, but I find that not many people agree. Your videos are what got me into fountain pens. Thank you and the Goulet pen team. Well, thank you, Hope. That's really nice of you to say. Um, absolutely, I have things that I disagree with. I hold the full, whole fountain pen community. Um, and I think if there's one thing that I've learned being in the fountain pen community for the last uh, eight years, is um, if you ask 10 people what they think about something, you're probably gonna get 10 different opinions about it. Or you may get, you know, five opinions that agree, but it'll be nuanced and they won't necessarily agree on it fully. That's part of the beauty of this whole hobby is it's so personalized and it's so, you can kind of sculpt it and get the experience that you want out of it. Um, but with that is gonna come a lot of different opinions. Now, definitely there are some, some things that people generally kind of agree on you know, pens that have larger ink capacity are usually a little more popular, but not necessarily, and, and all these kind of things. So we could talk all day about different people's opinions and stuff like that, but um, I definitely have some opinions that I could talk about, which will maybe spark some, some curiosity on your part. Um, but, uh, um, you know, all of this is, to me, so interesting because it's, it's completely driven by passion. Everybody who's in this community is here because they want to be, not because they have to be. So we all have our little things and our little quirks that we love. And, you know, it's, it's fun to kind of get in and banter and stand up for the things that we really like. And we kind of band together on, you know, it's funny. Like, we'll have somebody be like, oh, yeah, man, I love this style of pen, blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait, you like fine nibs? Ah, oh, screw fine nibs. You know, and so it's just really interesting um, to see how, like, we can all agree on certain parts, but then a complete, completely opposite about nuanced pieces of it. It's really fascinating. Um, so I'll get into a few uh, that I just kind of thought of off the top of my head uh, last night as I was prepping this. So uh, one of them that I think uh, are kind of interesting, I've talked about this a little bit, but um, I have a collection now of 500 pens or so. I don't have an exact count at the moment, um, but it's a, I have a lot, a lot of different pens. Um, and I will say, based on the style that I tend to use most of my pens, I think uh, my favorite filling mechanism is the cartridge converter. And I know that's a little bit controversial because typically they're cheaper pens, you know, the more expensive and elaborate ones like a Pelican M800 is a piston and has a bigger ink capacity and yada, yada, yada. I change my inks a lot and I like to be versatile. And usually when you get into piston pens, you get into proprietary tools to take them up. They don't make them as easily disassemblable and all this kind of stuff. I'm a tinkerer. I like to swap my nibs. I like to mess around. I change my inks a lot. I actually prefer the cartridge converter pen because it's so easy to maintain. They're generally more affordable so you can buy more pens, you know, I love that. Um, you can use the bulb syringe to clean them out. This is my single favorite tip that I've ever discovered in the fountain pen community so far is using a bulb syringe to clean out a cartridge converter pen um, and just being able to take them apart and play with them and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I know when questions come up about favorite filling mechanisms, there will be a select few that talk about cartridge converter and they usually get bashed by people that are, oh, you know, how could you say that? That's the, the Platinum Preppy uses a cartridge converter. Well, I don't know. I like, I like them and I'll defend cartridge converters. Um, so that's one, one thing uh, that I'll stand up for. Um, for me, okay, so everybody's got different nib size preferences, of course. Um, but for me, broad nibs um, are, are generally not popular in the community at all. That's why they're just shrinking and going away a lot in a lot of different pen models. Because, And I'm, I have my sales numbers to prove people don't buy broads. Like, they just do not follow through on them. That makes me sad. I wish they... That more people bought them. I think a lot of it has to do with paper quality. We could debate that all day long. That's not the issue. But my contentious kind of thing about broader nibs in general, my handwriting, my personal handwriting, I feel gets better as I go broader on my nibs. And I think it looks worse when I go with finer nibs. And it completely befuddles me. I literally still don't understand other people's viewpoint on that. I've had it explained to me. You'll explain to me in the comments about why that is the case for you. And it still just will not be something that I can understand. The way that it's explained to me is when you have a finer nib, you're able to control it more or something like that. I don't know. I guess I don't really understand. I can't even explain it. But apparently most people, when they use finer nibs, their handwriting looks better to them. Um, I guess when you have a broader nib, the letters can run together or something like that. But I, I tend to write larger most of the time when I write, you know, specifically if I'm using like a dot grid paper or something like that, unless I'm using a really extra fine nib, if I'm using something broader, I'll just double up the lines and just write that thing big, you know, or I'll take two lines, whatever I have to do. 
a lot of my notes and stuff are a little more freehand and I'll just take up as much space as I need to. So I'm, I'm not afraid to write bigger. I tend to write pretty fast as well. So some about a broader nibs to me, just it makes my handwriting look better, especially stubs, love stubs. Um, when I write, you know, like extra fines and fines, I have to slow down a little bit and it just, it, to me, it like, I have more like wiggly kind of like, you see more of my kind of wiggliness and imperfections and uh, it just doesn't look as good. So the broader nibs to me kind of like mask and smooth out a lot of my shakiness <laughs> while I'm writing. I don't have like that shaky hands, but just like, I, I'm very inconsistent with my letters. Like when I write an, an I'm the worst with like lowercase L's and lowercase T's. I'll, I'll do a straight line on an L and I'll loop a T and then cross it. And it just, it's a mess. You know, I'll try to loop my L's. And if I'm writing a, you know, the, a word that has two L's in it, one will be a straight line. The other one will be a loop. And it's just a mess. I can't get it together. So when I have broader nibs, it kind of like masks that and makes everything look a little more similar. So to me, in my handwriting, I think it looks better with broad nibs. Most people think their handwriting looks better with fine nibs. That's a thing. Um, another thing kind of related to handwriting is um, generally speaking, and I even say this in my own videos, like if you want your handwriting to be better, especially with something like a flex nib or a stub or something like that, slow down your writing and be more intentional about it. That will help most people. That's why I say that in the videos. But me personally, it's the opposite. Um, I, I tend to do a little better. Maybe this has to do with my using broader nibs and stuff like that. Um, but I find that my handwriting tends to be in a sweet spot about like the 70% mark. If you go like as slow as you could possibly stand and as fast as you can handle it, if I'm at about 70% speed, that's kind of my sweet spot in terms of how my handwriting looks best. If I slow down too much, again, I get kind of that inconsistent shaky thing. Maybe that just means I need to practice more. Probably that's the case, but in just in terms of the way that I've been using pens for the last whatever years, um, is uh, that's about my sweet spot in terms of the speed. So uh, I tend to, you know, I tend to be a, a get, you know, my, my handwriting looks a little better if I try to, if I'm, if I'm pushing my speed just a little bit. Um, and that's not, not super common. Um, this is another one. And oh, this one is gonna get some of you stirred up a little bit. Maybe not all of you, but some of you will, will scoff at me about this. And so I'm, I'm putting it out there. Just go ahead, put your comments in. I can take it. I'm a big boy. Um, I, of all people, love fountain pens. And you all know that. Like, this is a, this is a safe place. I can talk here. This is a trusting place. Um, I love fountain pens. You know that. It's my life. It's literally my livelihood. I feed my family because of fountain pens. Literally, because Rachel and I are both in this business, we would not be where we are without found pens. Um, that said, as much as I'm in love with them and as deep as I am passionate about them, I do not believe that fountain pens have to be used for everything. I know, I know. There are some people out there that like they're complete and total converts. They never want to touch or look at a ballpoint or rollerball the rest of their lives. To me, as much as I love them, they are still a tool. And um, as far as what purpose they're accomplishing to me, it's enjoyment. And I do not enjoy the experience of writing with a fountain pen on carbon copy paper or writing with a fountain pen on like a photo paper or uh, a, a receipt at a restaurant and it smears everywhere. That to me is trying to make a tool do something that it's not intended to do. So I'm a little more pragmatic in terms of that. And, and along those lines, I also don't believe that everybody in the world should use fountain pens. I know that probably seems a little weird because it's like, I obviously would benefit greatly if a lot more people use fountain pens, but I know that they're not for everyone and for every situation. It's niche, it has its place. I want the people that use them to be super passionate and do it. There's nothing that irks me more related to fountain pens than when I try to introduce people to it and all they do is complain and piss and moan and talk about how it leaks on their fingers and all stuff. And I'm like, that's part of the experience. Like you gotta love that. And if, if somebody is fighting it that hard and it's just, ah, oh, I use this pen and I, I inked it up and it's, it's not writing anymore. And I go in there and the, the converter's dry <laughs> and there's no ink left in the pen. I'm like, well, you gotta refill the the pen with ink and they're like, ah, this is too much trouble. And I'm like, you should not use fountain pens. Just go back to your ball points and just, just leave this community because this is not for you. You know, if they're, they're, if they're fighting it that hard. So I will never try to like push somebody into it. 
if they're not meant to be. And I've introduced like all my family members and everything to it. And most of them do not use fountain pens on a regular basis because it's just not for everybody. But I like that it keeps this, this community like pure and, and not pure, you know, in like a weird way, but like, you know, it keeps it passionate and everybody who's into it is super into it. And that to me is just awesome. So I know, yes, financially, I could probably benefit more by pushing and pushing and trying to get people into it more, but I'm, I'm not into that. So um, I maybe am against you know, some logic in that way, especially like in the personal use and not trying to use it in every situation. You know, I do carry around a rollerball pen. Now, I'm still picky about my rollerballs, but I do carry around a rollerball to use in certain situations where it makes sense. Um, I'm not big on ballpoints though. I still really hate those. So I try never to use those if I have any choice about it. Um, okay, so this is another one uh, um, that I'll get into. Um, I ink up and carry any and all of my pens, even the ones that cost $1,000 or more. I will ink them up and I'll use it. To me, life is too short to buy a pen, keep it in the box, shove it away. And to me, like that's a collector thing and I respect that, but that's not me. Like I would never wanna buy a pen and just stick it away and never pull it out and look at it and play with it and ink it up and all that stuff. So I, all my pens are fair game, you know? I've got a, Namiki um, Moonlight uh, Yukari that is $2,800. It's my most expensive pen. And I ink it up and carry it around. And I'll bring it and, you know, show it to people and let them hold it and play with it and stuff like that. And that's, to me, that's like, yeah, man, that's why these things exist. It's functional art. That's that's the beauty of it to me. So to me, I would never buy it and just kind of stick it away. That's Some people do that. And look, I got, I got nothing but respect if that's how you want to do it. Because again, this is a personal lifestyle thing. So more power to you if you want to do that. But for me, I don't do that. I ink up everything. I use it. I carry stuff around. And I really don't sweat it. I've, I'm not a clumsy person. So um, I've never like I've never lost any meaningful pen. I may have some preppies I've lost track of, but I've never had a meaningful pen that I've lost. Um, I keep track of everything. Um, I've never dropped anything and damaged it significantly. Now I know other people have and that's fine, but in all my experience, I never have. So I just, I'm not an accident prone person. So I'll just carry them around everywhere and just use them. And you know, they're just pens. You can replace them if you need to over time. Now, if I lose a $2,800 pen, that'd be pretty sad, but I keep track of those pens pretty well. Um, okay, and then this last one um, is kind of interesting. This is about paper. Um, for me, paper can never be too smooth. Uh, some people like absolutely hate Clairefontaine because it's too smooth. Some people hate Rhodia, they think it's too smooth and they prefer something with a lot more bite. I, I like and appreciate a lot of different kinds of paper. I tend to lean towards the smoother papers, but literally like Clairefontaine Triumph is some of the smoothest paper I've ever used. And even that, I'm not like, I'm not like, ooh, this is getting to be too smooth. I'm like, yeah, this is great. Give it to me smoother, you know? Like, I'll take paper as smooth as it can possibly be. Um, you know, if ink would work on photo paper, I'd probably use it on that. You know, it's like, uh, for me, I just, the smoother it is, the better. So I've never had any trifecta of pen, ink, and paper to me that's ever felt too smooth, which is funny because I write really fast. I use broad nibs and stuff like that. And that just, to me, I love it. I just love it. Maybe I'm just not as picky about how my handwriting looks, <laughs> but that's kind of where I'm at. So anyway, some fun stuff there. 